The case control study is an important observational study design frequently used in clinical research. This study type is relatively inexpensive and easy to both design and perform. Before explaining the features of a case control study, make sure to subscribe to the channel and activate the notification bell to stay updated. Researchers using a case control study opt to determine whether an exposure is associated with an outcome. As the term already gives away, there are two groups observed here, cases and controls. First, one needs to identify the cases, a group that is known to have the outcome, which might be a certain type of cancer for example. These cases are matched to controls, a group known to be free of the outcome. Ideally, controls should be chosen to be as similar as possible to the cases. Secondly, in the case control study, researchers go back in time investigating exposures, which means that case control studies are inherently retrospective. Here, the frequency of the predefined exposure is quantified in both groups and compared. As an example, one could evaluate the quantity of people in both groups that were smoking years prior to the outcome. Hypothetically, if the evaluation demonstrates that people in the case group were smoking significantly more frequently and there were more non-smokers in the control group, there might be an association of smoking and cancer. At this point, this would just be considered a correlation and no causation yet. While case control studies are useful and easy to conduct, they have several limitations. One of these is recall bias, which refers to the fact that people that are affected by a certain condition might be more or less likely to remember events in their past. For example, it is possible that lung cancer patients are more likely to remember previous exposure to carcinogens than unaffected individuals. The second shortcoming of case control studies is selection bias, which occurs when some individuals are more to enroll in a case control study than others. In our example, this could happen if previous smokers who now have lung cancer were more or less likely to participate than lung cancer patients who never smoked. Therefore, it requires more studies and ideally a meta-analysis to also prove the results of a case control study. By the way, that example was inspired from one of the most well-known case control studies which was indeed performed by Richard Dahl and Bradford Hill. They published the strong association between tobacco consumption and lung cancer in 1950 and 1952. During that time, there were still people questioning their results. Only a decade later, a prospective cohort study could indeed validate their previous observations. Speaking about cohort studies, why don't you check out this video here? Nowadays, it is commonly known that smoking causes lung cancer. So, better stop smoking, please like this video and subscribe to the channel to support me. Thanks a lot.